Yo, what is going on, Time Clan? It is your boy King Time Next here, back with another video, and this video is going to be interesting, considering that you guys have read the title, and on top of that, I actually got this idea from a couple of people on Discord. I will leave the links to their social medias in the description below, since they did help with planning out a bit of the story. And when it came on to the idea itself, like I figure I may as well credit the original person who came up with it. Now, let's get on to the video. Azuku's birth wouldn't have been the most ideal of situations. You see, what ended up happening is that Inko was 16, was 16 when she ended up giving birth to Azuku. Inko was supposed to be a good child you could say one of uh, the good girls in one of the good girls in school she always used to get high grades and she would usually stay out of trouble that was until she ended up meeting a boy by the name of Boros he had one eye and seemingly magenta hair he looked pretty much like an alien, really, but Inko was strangely infatuated with this boy. He was different from most of the kids at his school. He was incredibly strong for his age. People were really wondering just what kind of kid he was. He would usually get into a lot of fights with almost all of them. He would end up winning in the very end. He would usually end his fights quite fast as well. He would have made a name for himself within the school. Inko was interested in this individual. He was not only strong but the way he acted. It was as if he knew that he was superior to most people. He could prove it as well. He wasn't cocky for the sake of being cocky. He was cocky for the sake of the fact that he knew he could genuinely take down as many people as possible. Inko had a feeling that he would become a hero one day though. She never would, would have expected for things to turn out like this. She thought that she could maybe change him over the years lead him in the right direction onto the right path of becoming a hero she could genuinely see him becoming one of the best heroes out there with his quirk after all he could genuinely make it into the top 10 he seemingly had he seemingly had a mixture of regeneration and energy project projection he figured that he probably had some sort of energy manipulation kind of quirk in where he could affect his body as well. Maybe sometimes he could build up enough energy to where he could use it to regenerate his own his own body. Basically parts of his body. At times it seemed like he could uh, regrow skin whenever he got burned or in some of the most extreme circumstances when people decided to bring knives and guns to a fist fight, he would be able to regenerate from even those sort of wounds. Some people would try to cut off his arms, his fingers, but he would show that he could genuinely regenerate from that as well. Inko really wanted to, to get this guy to join the good side. To become a hero not just any common thug but unfortunately things didn't turn out like that of course she would have uh, started talking to this man this 
this would result into going steady, you could say. And eventually, Inko would have ended up uh, becoming the, the mother to Boros' child. Boros wasn't all that interested in the child, though. He wasn't really interested in much at all. All he was concerned about was fighting, becoming stronger, showing that he was superior to the rest. Inko was disheartened to find this out, that even though he had a child on the way, all he was concerned about was fighting. He would eventually even go ghost on Inko. He said he didn't have time to raise a child. He needed to build up his own legacy after all. He needed to show to the world what Boros was really cap capable of. Inko would have been kicked out of her home by her parents after they found out that she was pregnant. Inko would have been forced to get a job, two jobs actually, just to be able to put food on the plate and just to be able to get a roof under her head as well, all while she was pregnant. Nine months would have passed and she would have given birth to Azuku. They wouldn't have lived on the best side of town. Azuku, as a matter of fact, he would have looked ex almost exactly like his father. And people would have already picked on him for only having one eye. The fact that they were living on the wrong side of town, the more troublesome parts, you could say the hood essentially, or the ghetto the ghetto areas of Japan. It just made Azuku's upbringing even tougher. Azuku would have to fend for himself most of the time while his mother was out working. She barely had any time to really talk with Azuku. She was just concerned about trying to provide for him, trying to be the provider for Azuku, trying to take up both roles but at the same time, failing in both ends. Azuku loved his mother at the end of the day though, so he would make sure to protect her name at all costs. He Every, every time a person would dare try to speak bad about his mother, talking about how she was barely ever home or how Azuku didn't know what sort of jobs that she worked. For all they knew, Inko could be doing some sort of illegal stuff in order to put food on to put food on the table for Azuku. Azuku would simply beat them up whenever they tried to mention something so heinous as that. He would teach everybody a lesson. In the Zuku, he was strong from a very young age. Although he only had one eye, one one giant eye. He and he actually inherited more from his father, Boros. He had a sort of energy manipulation quirk as well. What separated Azuku's quirk from his father's own though was the fact that Azuku also inherited it inherited a bit from his mother and where he could actually drain the energy from other people as well rather than just having to build up the energy on his own. Izuku would of course had more potential than his father. He would have had a stronger regeneration quake thanks to the fact that he could also absorb the energy from others around him. Azuku would have been considered a serious threat to all throughout the years, but people would still try to bully him. People would still try to mock him, try to mock his living situations at school. People would always try to make fun of Azuku for his appearance. Azuku would always end up fighting back in the end, and he would have, of course, been sent to the principal's office multiple times. He would be suspended. Sometimes he would get referrals, even expelled sometimes. And his mother, she would have to enroll him into other schools. She would beg for him to just be nice to some of these kids. But Azuka would try to explain 
each and every time that these kids were bullies. They tried to even talk bad, bad about her. He was simply trying to protect her name, trying to protect her honor, especially considering the fact that that his father walked out on them just so many years ago. Before Izuku was even born, his father decided to walk out on them. Inko would have mentioned that she simply didn't care about that stuff. She didn't care what people thought about her. She cared about Izuku's upbringing though. She wanted Izuku to have a life that she, that she never had. She wanted Izuku to grow up to become a hero. He was strong enough after all. He had a, he had an extremely powerful quirk. But Azuku, he was more on the wishy-washy side. He wasn't sure if he was really cut out to be a hero, but his mother always wanted him to become one. He respected his mother though, and he would try to at least be nice in school sometimes. Over the years, it just became harder and harder to keep calm under these sort of situations. Eventually, Azuku would just lose it. Azuku would simply lose it and go ballistic on some of the kids, putting some of them in the ER for the fact that they kept on messing with him, kept on bullying him, kept on mentioning how his mother should have never brought him into existence, how she was terrible for letting a villain uh, end up knocking her up while she was still a teenager and how she should just and she should repent she should commit seppuku for what she had done bringing another possible villain into this world all because of the fact that his father Boros ended up becoming a villain in the end people were saying that Azuku would end up just like his father he would end up being exactly the same. And considering the fact that Boros ended up becoming one of the top villains in Japan, one of the most wanted criminals, he even gave All Might to run for his money at one point, but All Might was eventually able to subdue Boros in the end. And Boros was sent to Tartarus for all of his misdeeds over the years. People were saying that Zuku would simply end up doing the exact same thing, becoming a villain and just as bad as his father and end up causing mayhem only for him to get subdued by a hero one day and be sent to the same place as his father. That's what really pushed Zuku over the edge. He was sick and tired of people constantly comparing him to his father, somebody he hadn't even met at all throughout all of his life. Azuku was sick of it all, that's why he put these people in the ER. He was sick and tired of all of these people constantly comparing the two of them. The police would have actually, the, pil the police, they would have actually arrived on the scene though and apprehended Azuku. They would explain that Azuku was under arrest for what he ended up doing to these kids. Azuku would have, would have tried to explain that it wasn't his fault. They were the ones that were constantly picking on him. But the police, they wouldn't hear it. All they were concerned about was the fact that they had just apprehended another villain in the making. Many of the kids, they would have cheered, cheered at the fact that Azuku was getting arrested. They would have seen this as perfect. They would have actually gotten another villain in the making out of here. They would have stopped another villain from being from being born. Azuku was essentially a ticking time bomb in their opinion. In their eyes, Azuku was no good. There was no way that he could be anything more than just a villain, just another threat to society. Azuku would have would have been better to just rot in a prison cell for the rest of his life.
than ever be allowed back into society. Azuku was 18 at this time. He would have spent two years in juvie and trying to go through a uh, reformation, you could say. They were trying to reform him, trying to make him a better person so that whenever he did come back to the rest of society, he wouldn't be as dangerous as he once was. They would have tried to make him a functioning member of society within Juvie, but Juvie only made it worse for Azuku. His viewpoints on life, they would have become more jagged, you could say. His height would have hardened over these two years, and Azuku, he would still get into fights, but the authorities, they would apprehend him most of the time before, before they could get truly serious. Azuku would have practiced with his quirk during this time as well. He would have learned new techniques on how to use his, his energy manipulation. And he would have also tried to work out. He would have tried to build up his body, you could say. One particular person always got on Zuku's nerves the most. That person being Konsky Bakugo. He was the worst of all of his bullies. And Izuku, he just wanted to wipe that smirk off of his face. Bakugo was just strong. He was a strong individual throughout the years and although Izuku was able to match him in battle, most of the kids usually cheered on for Bakugo and they would even mess up their fights just to make sure that Bakugo won in the end. Izuku couldn't believe what was happening. So many people root for, Baku, for Bakugo, another bully, just because of the fact that he had a flashy quake and this one wasn't the villain. It made no sense to Azuku just how hypocritical these guys could be, especially when Bakugo seemed to be more of a villain than Azuku was at times. But the kids would praise Bakugo. What about Azuku? Why couldn't he get praised for his good deeds? Whenever he tried to be nice, people would just usually spit at him in the end. They would have constantly cursed at him, saying that he was a no good villain in the making. Azuku couldn't help the fact that he was born the son of a villain. That's something he could just never understand. Why, why would they always put the blame onto him for his father's misdeeds? He did nothing. He was just forced into he was just forced into these situations where he had to toughen up, and in order to toughen up, uh, sure, he had to put some people in the ER. But in his, in Azuku's eyes, they just deserved it. Azuku just wanted to be loved for once by others. Was that so hard to ask? But fine. If the people wanted a villain out of him, then he supposed that a villain, a villain was what they would get. When Izuku actually made it out of Juvie two years later, he would have greeted his mother and given her a hug. She would have been crying, re requesting that Izuku just take it easy for right now. But uh, Izuku, he would have been silent. All, uh, would have been silent on the way home. He would not have spoken a word until he reached home and he would just say he's sorry. He's sorry for all of the torment that he's put his mother through but he can't say that he won't, he won't stop. He may just end up becoming exactly like his father. Inko would have asked why though, why did he have to be like his father? Why couldn't he just be a hero? Look, she would try to explain that she managed to do something for Azuku. She set up a sort of meeting with a high school, you could say. One, one pretty bad high school, but a high school nonetheless. This high school was what you could say 
a pretty run down high school really it was run down but it was supposedly a hero high school at the very end of the day Inko managed to sign it up to where Azuku could actually attend there so long as he also took some some after school classes these classes being about anger issues Azuku he would look into his mother's eyes and just sigh accepting the chance Azuku would have decided to enlist enlist as part of the school's um, population you could say. He would assign to actually become a student at this rundown high school and although the kids were pretty bad, the teaching was pretty decent he supposed. He kinda did mess up his life by getting into jewelry and um, going through all of these expulsions over the years so he really couldn't complain about his current education he was getting the best that his mother could provide for him right now and he respected that Azuku still wasn't sure if he could really become a hero at this point though Azuku would notice one day that his mother was kind of struggling to pay the bills for the apartment that they were living in. Rent was apparently three months overdue and well Azuku decided to fix that. After school he decided to skip his his anger management classes and instead he would actually run by a fast food restaurant. He knew that he probably wasn't going to get a lot of money, but hey, money was money at the end of the day. He would have just put on his ski mask and put on a black jacket. Azuku was pretty tall for his age, around 6'2 at the age of 15. And so he was pretty, pretty much kind of hard to be unnoticed by most of the crowd putting on the jacket and ski mask could at least hide some of his features. He would walk into the con not into the convenience store but the fast food restaurant and he would request that everybody end up giving him their wallets, their purses and for the cashier to well empty the cash register. He would have shown his quirk at this moment he he would have basically done this he would have let off a large explosion of energy which would frighten most other people there most of them had pretty weak quirks so they can't really defend themselves the most powerful quirk within the vicinity within the vicinity right now that could even remotely match up to Azuku's own was well the ability to create um wood. I'm not joking. You know, somebody's quirk was literally that they could just create items made out of wood. That was the most powerful quirk there that could actually contend with Azuku's own. Needless to say, everybody was willing to empty their wallets just so that they wouldn't get hurt. Azuku would have collected the money and he would have quickly made his way out of there. He would make it into one corner while the police were pursuing him. He would actually make it into an alleyway and change change costumes you could say. He, he would have lost the police at this moment and he would have stuffed the money into his pockets. He wound up changed out of the ski mask and the jacket, leaving them in the dumpster can before deciding to just act as if nothing happened, making his way back home and leaving the money on Inko's desk, mentioning how he decided to take up a part-time jo part job recently in order to help with the bills. 
Inko was a bit suspicious, but she appreciated the offer. She appreciated the fact that Azuku was trying to seemingly be a more productive person of society and be an asset to society really rather than just be exactly like his father or so she thought. This was just going to be the beginning of Azuku's road to villainy or supposed villainy. Azuku still wasn't, wasn't sure if he was going to continue to commit these sort of crimes or if he was genuinely going to listen to his mother in the end and try to become a hero or uh, try to repent trying to genuinely uh, trying to genuinely become something different from his father he wasn't sure if the people were right or if his mother was right he wasn't sure what to listen to at this point Azuku just didn't want to see his mother struggle as much as she had to for most of his life for pretty, much, for pretty much all of his life really Azuku just wanted to be a better son to Inko but life just kept on giving them curveballs after curveballs that Azuku he just had to sell the score he just had to do something else he had to just figure out a way in order to get out of this bad situation but at the end of the day Azuku still wasn't sure what he was going to do whether he would become a villain or a hero it would all have to just wait he would just have to see as time went by what would end up being the choice in the very end what what would end up being the route he took Azuku would continue to do this little tirade of robbing a bunch of these different stores whether it be a fast food restaurant or a convenience store maybe even sometimes a gas station or whichever didn't really matter to Azuku what actually did matter to Azuku at the time was to just get money he realized just how important money was in this society when you grew up poor with no father figure in your life and your mother was struggling to pay bills as well all the time you see her working 24 7 practically working herself to death you would understand very early on that money essentially ruled the world Azuku would change up his outfit every now and then. He realized that when it came on to the police as well, they hadn't been looking for him for quite a while, but they weren't necessarily able to completely, completely identify him. The only thing that they could really identify was his height. After all, he was a rather tall fellow, 6 foot 2 in Japan. I believe like the average height for somebody in Japan would probably be around like 5'6". Yeah, Azuku was tall. Very tall. He s stood out in the crowd. But the only thing that the police really had on Azuku was the fact that he had some sort of energy manipulation quirk. And that he was tall. Not much else and considering how vague that is it wasn't going to be that much help for the police whatsoever especially when considering the fact that Izuku also had regeneration added on top of his energy manipulation abilities Azuku was able to heal himself and create a lot of energy not only that but he could also absorb energy from others as well something that he didn't really use all that often but he wasn't afraid to use it nowadays if he was in a dire sort of situation he would be willing to use it but for right now he never really had a need to use that other side of his quake the absorption plate 
that most of you will probably use it is when absorbing electricity or something. But that was as far as he would go. He wouldn't. He would try to avoid absorbing energy from other living, living life forms. That would probably take a ten for the worst, you could say, as he wouldn't want to risk that sort of image be put onto him. He didn't want to be considered a murderer like his father. His father, Boros, was known for killing people. He was notorious when it came on to his villainous actions. That was the whole reason why he ended up in Tartarus in the first place. This man was known for killing people while looking for a fight. He was known for theft, robbery, whatever you want to call it, but he was also known for creating, creating tragedies. If you got in his way, then there was a good possibility that you would die. And Izuku, he didn't want to be anything like his father, but it seemed that he was just becoming closer and closer to acting just like his father. He knew why he was doing it. He had to make some money in order to help his mother pay the bills, but he he understood at the same time that this was exactly how his father was acting, or at least, well, at least these sort of actions, if they were to be shown in the public media, it would just be, oh, Izuku was just like his father, a villain born from a villain. That's the way the public would, prob pro would probably treat Azuku's situation. They wouldn't acknowledge the fact that he was poor, the fact that his mother was struggling to pay the bills. They wouldn't acknowledge any of that. They wouldn't acknowledge their whole reason why he was robbing stores in the first place. They wouldn't acknowledge that, but they would acknowledge the fact that he robbed these stores, that he was acting like a villain. And if he were to attempt to even put his hands on, on another person, person and absorb some of their energy, Azuku didn't want to know what would happen. He didn't want to know how addicting it could end up becoming over time if he were to try and do that. And next thing you know, he absorbs too much energy from one person and they end up dying. He did not want to be a murderer. And so, that's when he ended up getting into a dilemma one day. You see, Azuku, he would have robbed another store and he was quickly trying to get away. But a portal opened up right in front of him. Azuku, he didn't have enough time to stop his momentum. Instead, he ended up going right through the portal and he found himself in an alleyway. He was confused at first and he looked around wondering what just happened until a person spoke up. This person had a rather raspy voice. They would introduce themselves as a sort of benefactor you could say. Somebody that was interested in Azuku's strengths his abilities, the fact that he was able to control energy and as far as they could see it seemed that it wasn't any sort of a weak energy manipulation quirk by any means. It seemed to be rather powerful, the whole fact that he could literally command a whole area of people at a time, the fact that he could essentially uh, caused so many people to become fearful of him in an instant without even actually using his powers on any of them, using his quirk on any of them whatsoever. It's just the fact that he's able to create these large balls of energy. That's what would terrify so many people. And you see, Izuku, he would benefit really really well if he were to join his team or at least just this once they would explain that they were planning on going to the USJ one day 
the unforeseen simulation joint for like UA students. Azuku was confused, but they would con continue to elaborate. Apparently, All Might was working at UA now, and they were hoping to probably end this man's career as soon as possible. They wanted to kill All Might. Azuku would automatically not be interested. He would explain that he was a lot of things, but he wasn't a murderer. He refused to ever go down that path, especially when it came on to the number one hero, All Might. He didn't want to get into those sort of muddy waters. Shigaraki would understand where Zuko was coming from, but he would also bring um, the whole issue of the fact that Zuko seemed to rob a lot of stores for some reason. He questioned why. Azuku would be hesitant to answer at first, but Shigaraki would press on. Was it because of the fact that he needed the money? If so, who wore what? Did he have to pay some bills? Did he have or did he have to pay some bills? Did he owe somebody money? What was the whole issue? Or did he just like to rob these stores for fun? And going by the look on Azuku's face, Shigaraki managed to conclude that Azuku was robbing these stores for somebody else. If that were the case, then who could that other person possibly be? Was it a loved one? If so, Shigaraki decided to mention this. He could help Izuku with his money issues if he were to just join his team this once. That's all he's asking. He wanted to he wanted Izuku to join his squad for the raid on the USJ just so that they could have as much backup as possible. They wanted to make sure that the symbol of peace was taken down to, not today, but one of these days. They wanted to take down the symbol of peace. They didn't necessarily have to kill him if Izuku was that fearful, but at the very least, put this man in retirement permanently. They wanted to put All Might in retirement because of the fact that this man was spreading his righteousness all across all across Japan but in actuality this man wasn't as grand as he made himself out to be at the end of the day All Might was still human and humans are known for making mistakes it just so happened that All Might had made quite a few mistakes during his time as a hero he wasn't there for everybody either, not like how he would always try to appear. Shigaraki also hated this modern hero society as well. The way that heroes tried to depict themselves as, oh, these goody two-shoes, and that it's always the heroes that are in the right, the villains are always in the wrong for their actions. Every single one of the villain's actions are always demonized for whatever reason. And Shigaraki, he wanted to put an end to that. In order to put an end to it though, the first thing he would have to do is to take down All Might. The more Shigaraki explained, Izuku would become more and more enticed in Shigaraki's vision to an extent. Well, not really. Izuku was more so enticed about the whole money part. Shigaraki would talk about the money uh, a couple of times. He would mention the fact that he was willing to pay Izuku a good amount of money for his services if he were to help him raid the USJ. And if it were a successful mission, he would pay for the rest of Izuku's bills you could say he would make sure that Izuku lived comfortably 
or at least his family would live comfortably so long as he worked underneath Shigaraki. Izuku was hesitant at first, but he realized that he didn't really have much of a choice. It was either this, or he continued to rob some, some more stores and risk getting captured by the police. And if he were to get captured by the police again, there was no guarantee that he would just go to Juvie again. They may try and put him in the actual slammers this time around. And he could only imagine the distraught face his mother would have. He didn't want to go through that whole ordeal again. So Izuku would end up shaking Shigaraki's hand. Although Shigaraki would mention how he can't really a handshake, you could say. He'd mention that he had an interesting quirk, you could say. Basically, his quirk's name was called a K, and the whole issue with that quirk is that if we were to put his whole five fingers on a person, it would begin to disintegrate their body. It would be the same for anything that Shigaraki touched actually with all five fingers. Anything he touched with all five fingers would begin to disintegrate over time, and so Shigaraki would simply try and do like a four finger handshake. It would be kind of awkward, but Azuku would understand what Shigaraki was trying to tell him. He understood what Shigaraki meant, and so he would be cautious while shaking Shigaraki's hand. Shigaraki would be the one to also give Azuku some directions as to where he should meet him yeah well as to where he should meet up with Shigaraki the next time around they plan on meeting on a specific date at a specific time he wanted Azuku to make sure not to be late Azuku would have looked at the time and realized that he also had school during that time but if it meant that he could make enough money to help his mother then he was down for it. School wasn't really all that helpful whatsoever. It was either that he helped his mother pay the bills or he can try and get some sort of education that he knew he wasn't going to use in the next couple of years. It's not like you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem or whatever in, in the real world, no. It's either that you find some connections in order to make yourself a hero or you get like a very good job. But Izuku, he already messed those two up. His whole life was ruined from the get go. So he knew that those options were all the way out the window. They were way out the window from even before his conception you could say. Izuku, he would end up getting ready on that day as well. He would be looking at the time and he would ask one of, the, one of his teachers if he could use the bathroom. The teacher would give Izuku the go that very day and obviously he didn't end up going to the bathroom. Instead, he would rush out to the school. He would leave the school and go into the streets. He would meet up in an alleyway and a dark port well I guess you could say a dark purple portal would open up. Azuku would walk through said portal and he would be introduced to Shigaraki's base, you could say. And there it was full of an army of other villains. Shigaraki would explain his goal to each of these villains once again, and they would be very motivated. Izuku would look through all of these villains and realize that absolutely none of these guys were really going to stand a chance against All Might. But then, he looked at this one strange, beefy villain. They, for some reason, had their brain exposed and their eyes looked lifeless. 
the whole setup as a matter of fact that it was as if he was looking at, at Frankenstein's monster for crying out loud when looking at this villain or at least he assumed it was a villain anyways. He wasn't completely sure, you couldn't get a good read on this guy for some reason. He had met quite a few characters throughout his life but he'd never seen anything like this one before. Zuku would be confused but Chigaraki would tell Zuku that this was their main weapon, this was their secret weapon, this was going to be the thing that killed All Might. Azuku, he would be hesitant as to whether he should believe this or not, but with how this being looked, it seemed to be the closest thing to actually being capable of even laying a hand on the symbol of peace. Kurigiri would open up a portal to the USJ and all of the villains they would literally just walk through said portal. Azuku would put on a ski mask of course and a jacket as well and he would walk through the portal alongside the villains. He was nervous, he had never done something along these lines before. He didn't really know what to do in this situation, but it was worth a shot. If it meant that he could make some good money and help his mom, honestly, there was nothing else to really worry about. He was hoping that these villains would also maybe teleport him back to their base after they were finished with this mission. Or if things went south, they would just teleport all of the villains back to the base. Considering how this one villain with, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, with this like mist like figure to themselves, he was hoping that he would be their scapegoat essentially if things turned, turned for the worse. If things, if things took a turn for the worse, then Kirigiri he would be easily able to just teleport these villains back. But at the back of his at the back of his mind, he had some doubts. He didn't know why though. But then again, he was dealing with villains. This was the first time he was dealing with actual villains, and this kind of terrified Zuku, despite the fact they tried to keep a cool demeanor. He would be introduced to the people at the USJ, these kids, and among this crowd of students, he would look and see somebody very, very familiar. Someone that immediately brought anger to Azuku, Konsuki Bakugo. Once the villains began to attack, Izuku, he would have just rushed in. He would have rushed in at specifically Bakugo Katsuki or Kats Katsuki? Uh, Bakugo Katsuki. <laughs> he was angered just by the appearance of Bakugo. He was surprised that this guy even managed to make it into UA with his attitude. He was angry. He was angry at the world. Why was somebody like Bakugo able to make it into UA but not Izuku? This guy probably did worse than Izuku ever did. Izuku, uh, sure, he beat up a couple people, but what did Bakugo do? He also beat up a bunch of people as a matter of fact. This guy would usually always abuse his power just because of the fact that he had a strong quirk. Azuku also had a strong quirk, but the only difference the only difference between the two of them was that Azuku, he just so happened to be born as the son of one of Japan's most notorious villains, Boros. But that didn't mean that he was Boros himself. He was only his offspring. And even then, that's as much as you could really call him because that guy wasn't really much of a father whatsoever. Boros was never even in Izuku's life, so he couldn't even really call 
Burroughs his father. At most you could call him You know what? I can't even say that. I probably can't even say that. He he was at best just a donor. He that's literally all Boros really was to Azuku. And now he's looking at Bakugo living Azuku's dream. He wanted to fight this guy so badly. That's the whole reason why he ended up even going for Bakugo first. Bakugo he would have been surprised but he would have tried to block off Azuku. He wouldn't have realized it was Azuku at the time though. Although the height would have said something. But even then height was a pretty loose figure you could say considering there were even taller people in Bakugo's class but Izuku he would have actually been able to block off Bakugo's attacks he would have actually absorbed some of the energy from Bakugo's attacks as a matter of fact and you would just redirect it at Bakugo which would surprise him and then Bakugo would be even more surprised by the physical strength of Azuku Azuku would have sucked Bakugo in the jaw and Bakugo he probably at this moment it felt as if he had slack jaw or whatever it felt as if his jaw was close was close to literally being detached from that one punch. Izuku wasn't playing around here. He was angry at the world right now. He was angry at the fact that Bakugo was living his dream. Angry at the fact that he had to be born to this one villain, to Boros. Angry at the world because of the fact that they literally forced him to become this way. Because of the fact that he had no other choice. Azuku would just begin to beat down on Bakugo and a couple of the other students until Azuku would notice that his quirk had been erased by the one known as Eraser Head. Although right after Eraser's head Eraser Head's head well yeah Eraser Head's head would end up getting grabbed by this strange villain with their brain exposed. Shigaraki would call them Nomu for some reason. Brainless? Uh, Zuko would have been confused but intrigued. He would see as this Nomu person would begin to just bash eraser heads face into the ground multiple times over and over again. Azuku's quirk where came back to him and he would have managed to defend himself against more other kids although Although he wasn't actually going to kill any of them He was just trying to take down Bakugo all he was really trying to do was just beat Bakugo into submission He let Bakugo basically walk all over him and during during their time in middle school or well the Japanese equivalent to middle school because of the fact that these kids would usually pick on him although Bakugo was never able to beat Azuku in a fight he would beat Azuku in a mental fight each and every time and Azuku was just letting all of his rage be fueled right now he was letting his rage fuel him right at this moment to the point where he had tunnel vision. He wasn't really understanding what was going on anymore. He was just so focused on taking down Bakugo. And when these couple of other kids decided to jump Azuku, Azuku would literally just knock them all back as well. Sure, Eraser had had erased his quirk at one point, but that was about it. Thanks to the Nomu basically saving Azuku for the rest of the fight by bashing Eraser heads face into the pavement and then Shigaraki he would also continue to hurt some of these kids A couple of the kids would have actually ended up dying by the shipwreck zone Or the flood zone or whatever that portion of the 
USJ was called because of the fact that there was nobody there who had a strong enough quake in order to create a sort of whirlpool or whichever. The only kids that were there were like a girl by the name of Suyu who had a frog mutation quake and a boy by the name of Minora Minata who had a quake that literally allowed him to just throw sticky purple spheres at people and they were surrounded by villains yeah you can probably tell who would have won in this sort of situation Azuku wouldn't even have been aware at the time that these kids were dead he didn't even realize that these kids were being killed one by one by the dozen he was just so focused on Bakugo he was just trying to show him that he was not one to be messed with he was trying to show him that after all of these years this was Bakugo finally getting a taste of his own medicine something that he should have gotten a long time ago he would have gone on to focus on a couple of the other students as well after he was done beating Bakugo into submission into an unconscious state One of the kids were managed to run by Azuku though at the last minute or at the last second. They would have been they would have been able to escape and make it out to USJ. Shigaraki would have realized immediately that this boy was going to get well back up. They were trying to get back up in the form of multiple heroes. And Shigaraki would acknowledge that this was a very bad situation, that they needed to hurry up immediately. They needed to hurry up in here, they needed to escape. But first, they wanted to get a little bit of a prize, you could say. Shigaraki would walk up to a racer head, Aizawa, and tell the Nomu to lay off the man for a second. Shigaraki would place his hand on Aizawa's head, all five fingers, and you can tell where I'm going with this. Shigaraki will continue to disintegrate Aizawa's head. Uh, Azuku would have seen what was going on, and he would also hear the screaming of Aizawa, and Azuku he wouldn't allow for this to happen. He wasn't going to just allow the Shigaraki guy to kill somebody while Azuku was watching. Azuku probably wouldn't be able to live with himself if he knew that he just let somebody die. And from as and as far as Azuku managed to see so far, this guy, a racer head, seemed to be innocent. This guy did not deserve death whatsoever, so Azuku would harness his energy and throw an energy blast at Shigaraki, getting him off of Aizawa. Shigaraki would have got him back up, brushed himself off a bit, and be confused. He would question what Azuku was doing. Azuku would explain that he wasn't going to just allow Shigaraki to kill somebody. Especially somebody that's not All oh Might. This was not part of the plan whatsoever. All Izuku was informed of was that they were going to raid the USJ, beat up a couple of kids, and also take down All Might, put the man in retirement. That's it. Shigaraki never mentioned killing any other heroes or hero students. That was where Izuku crossed the line. Shigaraki would mention that they were villains though, this is what they do. Azuku would mention the fact that no, Azuku was just a petty robber because of the fact that he was just trying to provide for his mother. They were not the same whatsoever, get that right. Uh, Azuku needed to clarify this because he was not about to be lumped in with a literal murderer like Shigaraki from the way he acted Izuku was able to tell that this wasn't 
and Shigaraki's first, first rodeo with killing people either. Azuku, he wanted to stay as far away from Shigaraki now. He didn't know that this was going to be what was going to happen at all. A couple minutes later, a bunch of heroes would actually would actually arrive and Azuku, he would have just been defending Aizawa interestingly enough from Shigaraki. The Nomu would have ended up getting into a fight with Azuku as well, but Azuku he was actually able to surprisingly hold his own against the Nomu because well at this point, Azuku didn't see the Nomu as an actual person. This was the first time that Azuku decided to use his energy absorption on another life form. But that was questionable considering what you consider to be alive. With all of the heroes there, they would end up sub subduing most of the villains rather quickly. Shigaraki would manage to escape though with Kirigiri, and unfortunately they were unable to leave with their Nomu because Azuku was holding it up. And then All Might uh, ran into the scene. He would have been the one to take take over, taking down the Nomu. Although it was more worn down from Azuku, considering the fact that Azuku was absorbing its energy throughout the fight. They both had really, really strong regeneration quakes. So it wasn't even like the Nomu had the edge in that portion either. Azuku's ability to absorb energy was also dampening the, the Nomu's, well, regeneration and well shock absorption on top of that its stats one have basically decreased thanks to azuku's absorption abilities azuku would have ended up absorbing that into himself essentially and all might would have had an easier time with the nomu but he would have also knocked out azuku once he noticed that he wasn't part of his class he would have understood that this kid was a villain or at least he imagined that this was just another villain all might would have karate chomped azuku in the back of the head and he would have put him in custody in custody when azuku woke up he would have found himself in a prison cell or well a jail cell with quirk erasing handcuffs on him. Apparently the police were waiting for Azuku to wake up from well his unconscious state because of the fact that they had a couple of questions for him and especially coming from one of the heroes as well, Eraserhead. Although when Eraserhead came to see Azuku, he was all bandaged up from head to toe. Honestly, Azuku thought that, well, Eraserhead was just a mummy at first, but he would explain that Recovery Girl just overdid it with the, well, bandages. But the main thing that Eraserhead wanted to know was, why did Azuku save him back there? Wasn't he allied with those other villains? Azuku would sigh and explain that he wasn't he was not really allied with these villains. He was only really working with these villains because of the promise that he would be able to make some money from this, that he would be able to make enough money to provide for his mother and himself. Because they were rather poor. His mother was working more than was was working more than one job and the whole reason he even started robbing some fast food and convenience stores was because of the fact that his mother was three months behind rent and they lived in the bad side of the neighborhood as well. Eraserhead would have continued to listen to Azuku's story and once he actually unmasked 
the kid and realized more about him, he would have actually felt bad. The, everything that ever happened to Izuku was really because of Boros, his father. It just started off as a fling between Boros and Azuku's mother, Inko. Back when Boros was just a guy who was picking fights with the wrong crowd, just one of those bad boy types. And eventually, he never seemed to grow out of that phase. Instead, he just continued to delve down deeper into it until he became one of the most notorious villains in Japan t to date. And now, he had a son that they actually had no idea about. Honestly, if the Hero Public Safety Commission knew about Azuku, uh, long ago, they probably they probably would have used them to their advantage. They probably would have tried to train him or do all these sorts of weird tests, trying to turn him into the perfect super soldier or well superhero in this case. But well, Azawa was glad that they didn't actually end up meeting Azuku because. He already lived a pretty troubled childhood already. He could only imagine how terrible it would be if he was raised by the Hero Public Safety Commission. Azuku was fairly young as well. Everything that Azawa would, would hear from Azuku just sounded like a young adolescent making stupid decisions. And he realized that. It would be a waste to just have this kid locked up in a cell, you know, well, well, yeah, just locked up in a cell, wasting his years, just rot just rotting away for the rest of his life behind bars, when he could just go out there and make an opportunity for himself, do something better in life. Aizawa would end up offering Azuku an opportunity of a lifetime. This being to work as a sort of pseudo psychic, you could say, to Aizawa. He couldn't really enroll Azuku into UA at this point, but what he could do is maybe recommend him and well, give him all these good boy points by having him work alongside him for for a while, you could say. Work with Aizawa, and he could even be paid for his work. Azuku would be intrigued. It definitely did sound like the well, offer of a lifetime to work underneath a superhero while not even having your hero license yet. And at the humble age of what, like 15, 16? Azuku found this to be a pretty wild situation. But as I would also mention that this was going to be a test run, you could say. They were hoping to uh, redeem Azuku so that he could eventually become a proper hero. He had a lot of potential after all. And then, well, it was either he go through this program or he just rot in jail for the rest of his life. He didn't really have much of a choice in the matter. It was, it was either freedom or... Well, limited freedom, you could say. Limited freedom, where you can get paid for your efforts, or you just run away in jail, make your mother upset, all of that. As I would even bring in the tidbit of, uh, of literally cleaning Azuku's slate. Of uh, like just making Azuku a clean record, you could say. Azuku liked where 
Aizawa was going with this. And Nezu would even pop in at one point as well, mentioning how they want to test this out. They believe that this boy was worthy of redemption. That this boy could be redeemed in a way. Azuku would, would actually be rather surprised to see a talking rodent, but he would also learn that they were apparently the principal of UA High School, and they wanted to build up publicity to an extent by helping Azuku. That, and they generally wanted to help Azuku because of the fact that they felt that he was done wrong throughout his life. That he deserved a second chance because of the fact that nobody ever gave him a chance to really begin with. And so, Azuku would end up would end up patrolling the streets with Aizawa. He would help quite a bit. And the only issue that Azuku ended up dealing with is the loss of another person. Well, he didn't necessarily know this person all that well. He had first met him at the USJ and that was literally the closest to an interaction he ever got with that person. But apparently apparently this boy's name was Tenya Ida and he was killed by the hero killer Stain a while ago at Hosu City. And Zuku felt bad for the boy's family. But there wasn't really much Azuku could do in that situation. He was still patrolling with Aizawa after all. And although the hero killer was still on, the, on was still on the loose, Azuku couldn't do anything. And he went and tried to fight the hero killer, not under command by Aizawa, of course. Then he could probably get into some serious trouble. Azuku would have also participated in the UA final exams by being one of the people that the students had to take down. Azuku was paired up against, um, well, uh, Danka, Danki Kaminari and, well, whoever else was there. Tail, tail boy, Ojiro for all I care. And due to the nature of Azuku's quake, he would have literally just absorbed Kaminari as well, energy or bolts, and redirected it at both Kaminari and Ojiro, which would be enough to knock both of them out. Azuku wouldn't have just felt as if this was a waste of his time, really with how easy these two were able to be taken down and he was questioning what exactly was UA teaching these kids in order for them to be taken down so easily at least when it came on to Bakugo and when at least when it came on to Bakugo it took more than like one hit in order to knock them out Bakugo was stubborn but persistent even when he was in a losing battle, he would still do his best to, well, Bakugo would still do his best to get back up on his feet and trying to attack Azuku. Although, Azuku would just slam Bakugo, Bakugo into the ground over and over again during the physical altercations. It was something that Zuku had to admit he was impressed by Bakugo, Bakugo about, especially when looking at these kids with no spleen whatsoever, no spine or anything. Azuku would end up also having to deal with being around these kids at a mountain lodge apparently, because they were going to be training up there, these kids weren't really and training their quirks that much. Despite all the experience they managed to gain when it came on to fighting villains, going to the um, to the sports festival, and then these final exams, the overall strength of their quirks had not increased by much. When it came on to Bakugo, he would 
even thrown one of those softballs into the air and then further launch it with the use of his explosion quick only for it to literally only get one meter higher than in the beginning of the school year uh, according to Eraserhead. Eraserhead would have actually placed the ball in Azuku's hand and request that he throw it in which case Azuku would oblige although he wouldn't really understand the message here and Azuku would have gotten around 1400 meters. A lot of the kids would be impressed with how strong Azuku was in order for him to be able to fling a ball that high into the air without the use of some sort of gravity manipulation quirk such as well Ochako or Araka but they would also be kind of hesitant to even really talk to Azuku considering his criminal history but Azawa would have made it a point to clarify that Azuku had been training his quake for a while. Although, yes, he's had his, his run-ins with the law. They were trying to change that. They were trying to make Azuku a better person. Help him, uh, help him as well with his situation that was going on at, at home. This was the whole reason why they were trying to trying to turn Izuku into a hero essentially. Try and build up a good enough record for Izuku to replace his previous previous history. Or at least to get to the point where the media would be willing to forgive Izuku for his previous history if he did enough good deeds. And the fact that he was getting paid for these deans was a plus in Azuku's book as well. Azuku was apparently meant to also be training these kids because of how strong Azuku was. Especially when it came on to his quirk, it would be rather convenient thanks to the fact that he had hyper regeneration and energy and energy absorption and, manip and manipulation. He would do very well against uh, physical fighters and energy based fighters as well. Energy based fighters would essentially be people like Bakugo and Todoroki if he ever used his fire but nobody was ever able to really convince Todoroki to use his fire. And Izuku sure wasn't going to convince him either especially when finding out the whole reason why. Apparently, it was because of uh, the fact that his father was pretty abusive to him and his mother throughout the years. And Azuku, he would have actually been kind of glad that his father was out of the picture. Not really knowing how his father would react to having to raise somebody like Azuku. Azuku would end up being de designated to the physical fighters and of course the energy based fighters like I've mentioned before. So he would basically be dealing with Bakugo, Oyama, and a couple others. But Azuku, he wouldn't be all that interested in fighting them. In all honesty, Azuku would have been on a more defensive side. He wouldn't just be pushing them enough to where it went. It would be enough to, well, push them forward. He would not necessarily dominate the fights. He would, of course, be on the defensive side, but he would have been on the defensive side to where, like, they could not necessarily hit him. Anytime that they were able to hit him, even then, they still weren't actually able to hurt him. And then Izuku also had energy manipulation as well, which meant that at any moment he could just use it. He could literally, literally just build up enough energy and then just shoot some energy blasts at these kids, which he would do at times, but he wouldn't do it all that often. That would be 
that would be a bit overkill you could say it would usually be by the end of the week that he actually started to do that though yeah and then during the end of the week they would try and do this sort of activity during the night something called like I actually forgot the name of it but what they would end up doing is a sort of game where they would try and scare each other class 1a and class 1b they had been stressed for the longest now especially with all of these villains attack with all of these villain attacks and their classmates dying out of nowhere because of these villains they needed a break Azuku humbly agreed with that as well when looking at the faces of these kids these kids they had similar eyes to him now which was really saying which it was really saying something considering everything that they had to deal with everything that Azuku had to deal with and then for these kids to have similar eyes to him no glow whatsoever in their eyes no real happiness in these eyes the only happiness that they really had was the fact that they were alive that was it and now honestly some of them it looked as if they were actually even unhappy to be alive right now as well but these kids would still try and push forward Azuku admired that and the fact that they played this this game of uh, trying to scare each other put a bit of a smile on his face showed that they were still human that they still had emotions as well Azuku wouldn't actually participate instead he would just be observing and you would notice this little kid by the name of Kota uh, actually walk over until the edge of the mountain. He would question what was the kid's deal and Mandalay would explain that Kota was apparently her nephew and the boy's parents had actually died defending, defending uh, what do you call it? A city of people basically they were trying to protect a good amount of people from a particular villain this villain just so happened to be muscular or at least that wasn't the name the public gave this villain ever since Kota despised heroes and despite her best efforts, she could never really change Kota. Azuku would decide to walk up to Kota and try to convince him otherwise. But Kota would look at Azuku and understand that he was related to the Boros. And he would tell him that he didn't want to hear anything coming from the son of a villain. Azuku was arguably worse than a hero at that point. Azuku wouldn't even let it phase him at this point. He was pretty much over it. He just would tell Kota that, hey, there are people that still love and care for you. They are the real heroes here. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it does not matter how you feel. Your parents are heroes. They made sure to protect those people but they weren't only protecting those people, they were protecting you because they cared for you, Kota. Your parents cared for you so deeply that they were willing to give up their own lives in order to protect you and all of those other people because of the fact that they had families just like them. They probably had children that they were planning on coming back home to. And if they were going to let these people die, then they probably wouldn't be able to live for themselves either. Would you really want your parent, your parents to be around? Knowing that they could have done something to help, but they didn't. Or would you also, ra or would you also rather be on the list of people that were killed by that villain? Villain because of the fact that 
your parents decided to spend a couple more minutes with you. Azuku was not going to be all that nice to Kota. Instead, he was going to give the kid a taste of reality. How the kid understand what was really going on here? And Kota, he would have been at a loss for words. He would have just told Azuku to get out. He did not want to talk to the son of a villain right now. And Azuku, he would do precisely that. He would begin to walk away until a cloaked figure ended up appearing right in front of Kota. They were wearing a mask, but they would take it off while talking about trading hats and masks. Kota would begin to stammer, and Azuku would have heard the nervousness in the boy's voice. He would turn around and realize that a villain had just appeared before them. Azuku would rush in and and will clock a punch in Muscular's jaw. Azuku wouldn't stop there either. He would punch Muscular in the face and he would headbutt Muscular as well. He wasn't about to just let Muscular kill this little brat. Sure, uh, Kota was a brat but he was still young. He still had plenty of time to grow and mature. And the fact that he was being given a second chance by Azawa, Azuku planned on not wasting it whatsoever. Koto would see how Azuku dealt with the villain muscular. Azuku wasn't even given muscular any sort of leeway in this fight. He wasn't about to leave an opening for muscular. He would be relentless in his fight against Muscular and this would leave an impression on the boy. Was this how a real hero fought? Kota would just begin to admire Izuku at this point. The fact that he was putting his own life on the line in order to save Kota. He would see on time that Muscular would actually manage to get the upper hand against Izuku and actually break one of his arms, his arms, but Azuku would quickly heal and then punch Muscular over and over again. Every time that Muscular managed to land a punch to Azuku, managed to land an attack on Azuku, Azuku would just quickly heal and begin to continue to hurl punches at Muscular until he fell unconscious. But even then, there wouldn't be all that much of of our help because of the fact that Azuku would look down and notice that the whole forest was on fire. There were blue flames all across the forest interestingly enough and Azuku would realize that even more villains were around here. Azuku would begin to panic and he would tell Kota to go find Mandalay, go find one of the, go find one of the heroes, make sure to stay close beside them or just Go find a place of safety. Uh, Kota would do precisely that and Azuku would hop down the cliff looking to find some of the other hero students that were around there. Azuku was rushing into the forest looking for as many kings as possible and he would notice a couple of villains along the way. He would take a good couple of them down but uh, eventually when he did manage to find a group he wasn't able to rescue one of them in time, actually two of them. Azuku was running on fumes, he was trying to generate some energy for himself but he was struggling now. He had never exerted himself to such a degree and he needed time to, uh, he needed time to regenerate, he needed time to build up that energy as well. And he wasn't about to just drain energy energy from one of the kids either. He did not want to risk killing them. He could already tell that they were all low on energy just like him. And then he had to deal with this marble guy. This guy wearing a trench coat and he also turned a couple of the kids into marbles. Tokoyami 
and Bakugo, which Azuka didn't really like Bakugo all that much, but at the same time, Bakugo, he did nothing wrong, at least not in recent times, to where he deserved to be captured and tortured by villains. Or at least that was what Azuku was assuming was going to happen. But Mr. Compress would look at Azuku kind of funny. And then he would decide that Azuku was worth taking in as well. He would begin to attack Azuku, trying to touch Azuku, but Azuku, he would have done his best to dodge in this moment. Many of the hero students, they would try to help Izuku in this fight against Mystic and Press, but in the end, Mystic and Press would get the best of Izuku, and he would just be able to tap Izuku's shoulder, turning the boy into a Mwaiable. He would escape with Izuku, Tokoyami, and Bakugo. All three would have been sent to the base of operations for the League of Villains. Azuku would end up meeting Shigaraki once again, and Shigaraki, he would have a smile on his face. Because he mentioned something about a family reunion. He wanted Izuku on his team for the longest now, but if he couldn't get Izuku, he could at least get his father. And sure enough, out of the shadows stepped Boros. Izuku would actually be rather surprised. He wasn't expecting for his father to be here whatsoever. It actually kind of scared him with the menacing glowing eye that his father had and his stature as well. This was the first time Azuku had ever actually met his father, especially in person like this. And the way his father talked to him was unusual to Azuku as well. He was expecting for his father to be super aggressive or, or whatever, but no, for some reason he was rather calm in the way that that he talked to Azuku, his son. He wasn't expecting for Boros to acknowledge the fact that Azuku was even his son in the first place, but Boros actually did. He acknowledged that Azuku was his family, and he expected great things from, from Azuku in the future. He even apologized for the fact that he wasn't in Azuku's life earlier. He was young and dumb that's the reason why he abandoned his fam family so many years ago and look what it got him into it got him into trouble with the law and who knows what sort of troubled childhood his son must have must have gone through shigaraki would be listening in anticipation waiting for boros to mention the whole aspect of joining the league of villains and not too long after, Boros would actually mention it. Boros would be the one to mention how, you know, how all for one, the creator of the League of Vill Villains, technically, wanted Izuku as part of his team. He actually ended up saving Boros from going to Toitaris in the first place. Boros became strong over the years and. All for one acknowledged his strength. He acknowledged him as more than just, oh, a villain in the making or just this troubled person. No, he did not look down on him whatsoever. He acknowledged that Boros was strong, but he also acknowledged that he was a person. He would speak very grandly of All for one, and Azuku would be tight lipped the whole time. Azuku didn't want to join the League of Villains, he wanted nothing to do with his father actually, and to hear that his father had joined the League of Villains made him even more disgruntled, you could say. Everything that his father was telling him, how he was sorry for not being in his life, how he wished he could turn back the hands of time, all that stuff. 
yeah, Azuku wasn't really buying it. Azuku honestly didn't even really hate his father anymore. No, he was dispassionate. That's not necessarily the word, but he was more so apathetic in terms of his father. In all honesty, he just wanted nothing to do with his father, and that was about it. But Boros just kept on finding a way to squeeze back into his life. Once, Bor once Boros was finished with his speech about how good the League of Villains would be for his son, Azuku would honestly just spit in his father's face by saying that he had no... He had... Intention of joining such a group known as the League of Villain Villains. People that would literally kill innocent children. Azuku was no saint, but he was not a murderer. He'd seen what Shigaraki would try to do. He would try to kill innocent people, all because he was trying to get to All Might. And these people, they did nothing wrong, but they were just in Shigaraki's way, apparently. And Azuku didn't vibe with that at all. Shigaraki seemed to be rather unstable. Azuku didn't want to mess with people like Shigaraki whatsoever in his life. Shigaraki would actually get angry hearing that. And he would call Azuku out, mentioning how he wasn't unstable. Azuku was an unstable one. Look at what he'd done throughout his childhood with crying out loud. He'd done a little bit of history on Azuku. And apparently Azuku had gone to Juvie. Uh, even though those records are supposed to be covered up. Well, when you have connections to the underworld or like to the black market, well, his father figure at the very least had connections to the black market, you would be easily able to get that sort of information regardless of if it's hidden from the public world or not. Shigaraki would mention how violent Izuku would usually be, and the fact that he got this chance to uh, redeem himself isn't really much of a redemption whatsoever. Nothing would make up for what he had done in his past. Azuku would stay silent for a, for a moment. Shigaraki would think that this was finally Azuku starting to think it through, starting to think his situation over, and realize where he really had no choice but to join the League of Villains that the heroes they were just using Azuku in order to you know, build a publicity stunt and then when that was over they would just throw him in, in juvie or like throw him behind bars for the rest of his life just have him make one mistake and then that's it for him but Azuku would speak up even if he ended up still going to prison for his earlier mistakes were being involved with the League of Villains during the USJ incident, no matter how much he tried to redeem himself, he would rather be part of prison for the rest of his life than to ever be part of the League of Villains again. He never wanted anything to do with the League of Villains. He never wanted to be considered a murderer either. He did not want that sort of blood on his hands. He would look directly at his father now. He never wanted to be anything like his father, but somehow, just some way, he ended up becoming a thief like his father, but that was as close as possible to ever really being like his father because of the fact that he needed to put food on the table. He needed to support his mother some way, somehow. And the fact that he became a thief was the only way because of the fact that he understood that his school wasn't really going to help him and he was taking anger management classes as well which was also taken away from his mother's pockets and she was three months behind rent the reason why he even started robbing stores in the first place what was Boros's excuse why he started robbing these places he started looking into into like his family life his parents as well and it seemed that they were pretty well off Boros just wanted to be petty Boros just wanted to be different. He was a bad boy for the sake of being a bad boy. He was a troubled teenager because of the fact that he was born with too much power. And that seemed to be the main issue in in this humanity 
in humankind today. The fact that some of them are just born with too much power thinking that they can do whatever they want. Azuk would go on to rant against his father until his father had enough and he would sucker punch his son in the face. Boros would command that Azuku close his mouth, learn to shut his mouth because of the fact that he had no idea what he's even talking about. Look at the situation he's in right now. Do you really think that it's an ideal situation to be really talking to him like that? Azuku would mention that he didn't care and Boros would just punch him in the teeth this time. It would actually crack a couple of his teeth and others they would actually fall out but and his mouth would begin to bleed but Izuku he would just smile through the pain and he would begin to heal himself but Boros he would have countermeasures he would use his own energy in order to go up against Izuku's regeneration this would be a shock to Izuku he had never met anybody who could really counter his regeneration besides well Aizawa a race ahead but his father, he supposed it made sense considering he'd been born with a similar quirk to Izuku. Well, besides the fact that Izuku's quirk was just a bit stronger due to the fact that Izuku could absorb energy from others as well. His father, he had to just generate that energy on his own. And, well, to be able to do that, it took a generous amount of time and he imagined that uh, adding that on top of the fact that he could well create energy blasts and all that's what he had energy manipulation it made sense that Boros would figure out a couple of tricks throughout the years being able to counter somebody's regeneration quick also made sense but Azuku honestly still wasn't expecting it whatsoever Boros would then mention how he could actually teach his son a couple of tricks if he were to actually join the League of Villains. He could teach him how to do exactly what he had just done to his son's regeneration. He could also teach Izuku about how the real world works. You see this world of heroes and villains, it's all, it's all a load of baloney in all honesty. Who decides who is a villain and who decides who is a hero? It's always the winning side that decides who is the good guys. Ever since the beginning of history, many people would often would often change the facts about history. Only the winners really have control over what is said in history. For example, uh, the U.S. would usually have it be that, well, they're looked at as the good guys in times of war, but if you go to any other country, you would notice a different side. You would notice a different story. Each time you would hear another story, and you would realize that the Americans aren't really all that much of a saint. Same for Japan. Of course, Japan would make itself look like, look like the good guys. They would have a very different story from the rest of the world. The rest of the world, they would have a very different interpretation of history. And that's just literally how it goes for each and every single one of these countries. In Japan especially, when it came out to heroes, they were only interpreted as heroes because of the fact that they were on the winning side. At one point, all for one was considered a hero in his own right. He was considered to be one of the best people in the world because of the, because of the fact that he had power. He was saving people. He was giving people quirks. He was taking away quirks from the people that didn't want their quirks. And yet, somehow, people interpreted that as the way of being evil later on. All because all for one began to lose power. All because of this one quirk called one for all the one quirk that all might had Izuku's eye would widen what did Boros mean by that what does what did his father mean by that one for all all for one what's with this sort of nonsense he, he was confused now Boros would notice this confused look on his son's face and he would explain the whole story of one for all and all for one. All for one is a person that he works under now. He's sort of a co-leader you could say at this point. But here's how the story went. 
Alphuan was one of the people born within the first couple of generations of quakes, back when quakes were a new thing. Alphuan had the ability to take and give quirks to others. Alpha One would usually do this to many people. Many people didn't want their quirks because of the fact that they didn't know how to use it. And those who did not have quirks, he would give those people's quirks to them. The people that, that didn't want quirks, he would give quirks to, to the people who were born with no quirk but wanted a quirk to protect themselves and their families. Those who wanted to live normal lives, they could go ahead and do so. Those, those who wanted to protect their families from other quirked individuals, they could do so. All for one was creating balance in the world, but for some reason, his brother, his weakling brother did not like that. This was the originator of One for All. One day, his brother would talk bad about everything that All for One was doing. And all for one would mention how he is basically doing the Lord's work. Uh, all for one would actually walk up to his brother and place his hand on his brother's face, his younger brother's face, and give him a stockpiling quirk. This would allow him to actually build up energy and strength over time and use it in battle. He would give his brother a form of defense and give his brothers something that others they would actually get to experience whenever they received a quirk from Alpha One. But he never expected for his brother to, well, actually have a quirk from before. He thought, his, he thought that his brother, well, was just quirkless, but it turned out that no, he just had a rather useless quirk, the ability to, to well, Pass this quirk on, which Boros was still a bit confused on how that necessarily worked, but it was whatever. Apparently, with this quirk, though, his his brother receiving the stockpiling quirk and having that original quirk, that quirk that he could just pass on, it would result in a mutation of sorts. Those two quirks would combine and complete and complete. Uh, it would turn into a completely different quirk. This quirk would from there on be known as One For All. This was the originator of the quirk that All Might had. There would be 8 users of the quirk. All, All Might being the 8th user and the strongest user yet. The one to actually end up defeating All For One and turn, and turn All For One's sacred name into that of a bad guy. Azuku would be listening to everything and still be rather skeptical as to whether he should believe all of this or not, but Boros would just shrug. And if her son didn't want to believe him, then that's fine, but that didn't mean he was gonna escape. Days would go by with Azuku in captivity, alongside Tokoyami and Bakugo, and Bakugo, each of them they would try to be brainwashed essentially to join the League of Villains, but it wasn't working. They had strong, strong enough minds in order to resist everything that the League of Villains were trying to tempt them into doing. It, each and every day, the League of Villains they would, they would actually try to tell each of the three that the heroes they weren't coming for them. They gave up on them a long time ago. The heroes they had only seen them for their worth in the field. And that these guys they weren't really worth saving because each of them had their own issues. Azuku for his troubled childhood and his and his involvement with the League of Villains. Bakugo for his aggressive nature. And Tokoyami for his unstable quirk. Well, at least when it came on to being in the dark. They'd seen what happened when Tokoyami let his emotions run wild and Dark Shadow would end up would and well it would actually end up consuming Tokoyami at certain points. They would mention how this would actually be a danger later on in the future. The heroes they didn't want to deal with this whatsoever, so it would be best if they just decided to leave them in the hands of the League of Villains, probably presuming that they're dead after all. 
well, maybe not Azuku with his regeneration abilities, but the other two, oh, they were probably dead. The villains, they would just try and crush their hope of being saved each and every day. And at times, they actually thought it was beginning to work, but no, it wasn't. Certain times, Azuku would feel doubt in his mind that the heroes were going to come for him. Even his father would supply more doubt into his mind, but Azuku would, rem would actually remember his mother here. He would reminisce about his mother, and at times that they would just be watching the heroes fight the villains, rescue civilians from burning towers, and all that on the news while well, 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 walking through the streets, I should say, and just seeing the uh, and just seeing the news on some on some TV screens from behind the glass doors of well or well not glass doors but glass windows of some stores that were selling TVs Azuku would just be amazed seeing this each and every time this was why he wanted to become a hero in the first place he wanted to become a hero to save people this Memory would rekindle a light inside of, well, not a light, but it would rekindle a fire, a deep burning passion to become a hero inside of Azuku's heart. So each and every day that the League of Villains they would try to uh, force Azuku into becoming a villain, Azuku would refuse. He would get beat up, sure, but no matter how many times he got beat up, he would still, you know, he would still stay his ground. He would still uh, glare at the League of Villains. He would still look down upon them, essentially, even though he was the one sitting down and they were the ones standing up. He would let them know that he was not going to join their league whatsoever. And Shigaraki, he was just getting frustrated. He couldn't stand this kid whatsoever. Why? was this kid so stubborn eventually one day they would receive a knock on their door this being some form of pizza delivery Shigaraki would be confused at first wondering who ordered pizza until the doors ended up busting down and the heroes would have arrived all might would have been there uh, in the flesh and most of the villains, they would be surprised, but they would try to gang up on All Might, only for a lot of them to actually get captured by Kamui Woods. Some of them, they would end up escaping though, thanks to All For One's abilities, and they would be on the, they would be in a battlefield all of a sudden. All Might would come crashing out of the League of Villains hideout and he would go to find Izuku, Bakugo, and Tokoyami because of the fact that they ended up getting teleported as well out of the hideout and onto the field. All for one would have been there though as well and he was ready to throw hands with All Might, get his revenge for everything that All Might had done to him beforehand. How he had basically ruined his face. I ruined literally his his whole empire. His whole empire ended up coming crashing down because of, because of All Might, and he hated All Might every day because of that. He hated All Might for the fact that he even had his little brother's quirk, and he had managed to make it such a monstrosity at this point. He wanted his brother's quirk back. He wanted what was rightfully his, rightfully his in the first place. It had no right to be. In All Might's hands, the fact that he had to fight with the quake of his little brother always upset All For One. But All Might, he didn't care. He didn't care for All For One's feelings whatsoever. This man was a monster. They would go on to fight, and Azuku would just watch the fight, but he would also try to escape, only for Oboros to come sweeping in and throw a sweeping kick at Azuku before jabbing him in the face he would end up also uppercutting Azuku and then kneeing him in the chest right after uh, all, uh, not all for one but Boros would end up throwing Azuku Azuku's face into the ground he would smother it in dirt and stay well he would also stay for his son to just stay down his father was going to handle this business. 
he was going to be a father this time around and he was going to show his son what true strength was the only reason that all might even even got him in the first place managed to get him in the first place well defeat him i should say was because he let his guard down around the, around the man he was too cocky back then he was too cocky and he ended up losing the advantage against all might but not again no he was going to get his revenge as well he was going to sneak up on all might at the time he was fighting all for one but Boros, he would end up going after All Might, and he would sucker punch All Might. All Might would feel that to his core. Boros would then go in for a kick to All Might's side, but the side that he ended up kicking was the one that had that bruise on it, that every living scar. All Might would internally shake. Uh, blood would begin to cough out of All Might's mouth. All for one would have realized. All for one would have realized what was going on, and he would smile. He would also go on to attack All Might. The two of them would double, would double team All Might, and All Might would be on the end of his ropes. He wouldn't be able to handle the two of them at once. Maybe if it was one of them, if he was fighting all for one or Boros one on one, it would be easier. But to fight those two at the same time, he was pushing his limits right now. It was infuriating how powerful these two were and just how weak All Might was getting. All Might was beginning to lose time and Azuku, he would get up and notice how weak All Might really was. You would even see the man go into a skinny form at one point and he would be shocked. But Azuku, he would stand up from the rubble, he would pick himself up and walk over to where All Might was fighting or well, he was supposed to be fighting these two. And he would yell for All Might to get up. Get up and show these people who All Might really is. Show them what the symbol of peace is really like. The people needed a symbol of peace, they needed a hero to look up to. Nobody cared if All Might had a skin form, nobody cared if All Might was weak or not. They knew All Might for being strong, for being the number one hero of Japan. So that's exactly what the people needed to see right now. In the times of hopelessness, they needed, they needed the symbol of hope, they needed a fire to light the way, they needed a light to light their path, they needed a fire in order to make sure that they kept on moving throughout life. How do you think Izuku managed to make it through life so far? At times of hopelessness, he would also look up to All Might for crying out loud. Boros would hear this and he would order his son to shut his mouth. He had no idea what he was talking about, but Izuku, he would just do an energy blast at his father, telling him to shut up. He had had enough of his father, telling him what to do. He wasn't even part of his life for the longest. Now he's trying to be part of his life now? No, he had no right to. Re he had absolutely no right to be part of Izuku's life to tell him what to do. Azuku was his own man now, and Boros, him wanting to be, to be part of Azuku's life was outrageous now. He found out to be so outrageous the fact that he wanted to be part of his life when it, when it became convenient for him. No, he didn't believe anything that Boros was trying to tell him beforehand either. This whole issue of him being young and dumb. Nah, he didn't believe any of that. There are people who are young and dumb but they still decide to be part of their kids lives. Boros messed up, and therefore, that was his issue. Aizawa was already more of a father figure to Azuku than Boros had ever been in those past couple of days that he actually got to know Azuku. And even then, those days that Boros got to knew his, well, got to knew, and um, got to know more about his son, it was more so about the fact that these two were completely different people. They had nothing in common besides their quake and appearance. That's literally, that's literally the only thing that they really had in common. Even when it came on to the basis of why they were robbing people. It was because Azuku, he needed to help his mother. Boros, 
he did that for fun because of the fact that he was so strong and mighty and nobody could tell him what to do. That was the reason why Boros began to rob these places, why he became a criminal. They were under very, very different philosophies, down to the very basis of their being. They were very, very different people. Azuku wanted nothing to do with his father and Boros would just become angry and he would try to rush in at Azuku only for All Might to come rushing right in after. He would end up grabbing Boros by the leg and throwing him into All For One's direction. All For One would use an air cannon in order to throw Boros away from him before he ended up crashing into him. Boros would be angry right now and he would go into a more powered state. Boros's full powered state would consist of his armor beginning to shred off. His skin would begin to turn pink and his hair it would become longer as well. It was comparable to that of like a Super Saiyan 3 from Dragon Ball Z or whatever. He wanted to fight All Might. And he wanted to fight him now, show him who was the true boss, who was the one who had the true power here, who had the stronger quirk between these two. All Might would come rushing in at, at Boros and all for one, he would put his all into the fight. And Zuku, he would also try and get into the fight as well. These two would, would do a tag team against Boros and well. All for one, these two would go at it for a good moment, for a good amount of time. At one point even, Endeavor would actually step in and help All Might against these two powerhouses. He needed all the help he could get in this sort of fight. And eventually, they would begin to overwhelm Boros' regeneration quirk. His, he, they would overwhelm Boros' regeneration. He needed energy built up in order to use his regeneration to his fullest. But right now, he was in his full powered state. He was using the last of his reserves of energy in order to in order to actually fight against All Might. Sure, he still had his super strength, but when it came out to his regeneration, he still needed a whole lot of energy built up in order to really be using it. He was only healing minor injuries at this point. And Zuku, he would begin to notice this. He would begin to con constantly press down. He would constantly press down on his father, press down on his father's regeneration until it reached its absolute limit, and he wasn't able to regenerate any longer. His father would end up going unconscious. He never expected for this outcome. All for one would have been defeated right after, right after Boros was defeated, and. All for one, he would fall to the ground. Both of them would be sent to Tartarus for the rest of their days, or at least, or at least for as long as possible. And Azuku, he would be recognized for his actions. He would be recognized as a hero of sorts. The police did want to say something about Azuku's actions, but the public. They would mention how Azuku was a hero. They would be willing to forgive everything that Azuku had done when he was younger, especially when looking into the whole reason why he had done it in the first place. They would they would set up a support campaign for his mother, essentially, in order to have it to where she wouldn't have to struggle to pay her bills whatsoever anymore. They would have it be that Azuku would get his license early compared to others and well no basically what ended up happening is that Azuku would go through the process of receiving his hero license alongside the rest of the remaining members of class 1A and they would go on to save as many civilians as possible Azuku would even be rewarded with payments of sorts from the public in order to help his mother survive you could say in these trenches and uh, get out of the of the projects of Japan essentially she would move on to live in a more stable neighborhood a neighborhood that actually respected her sort of she would actually get to live the life that she never got to live before all thanks to her son 
she lived in the more precious, safer parts of Japan. And Izuku, he also became a hero, something that he never thought he would ever actually become, considering his history, how he was basically jeopardized from birth, essentially, from conception. He never thought he'd become a hero, but he always wanted to be one in order to help his mother. And now, he finally did become a hero. He would go on to become the number one hero, actually. Well, not number one, more so number two for a while, until Mirio, the current holder of One For All, would pass down his quirk and he would go disappear. He for some reason ended up dying early. He didn't know why the boy died early. He seemed to have so much potential, but apparently having both permeation and one for all wasn't the best combination whatsoever. And so Mirio would end up dying early from from the quake. His heart would give out on him. Eventually in in the middle of a campaign speech or whatever and Azuku he would he would actually end up being promoted to the number one hero. But Azuku he would go on to also teach the next the next generation of heroes and even set up a campaign of sorts. He would set up a project to redeem those who were once criminals. Those who actually wanted to well be redeemed he wanted to help people give them a second chance at life something that they were never really given beforehand he'd been through that sort of struggle he'd been through that sort of struggle as well and therefore that was the whole reason why Azuka wanted to help ex-criminals become heroes or at least turn their lives around become more successful in life or yeah just become more successful in life become better people rather than just having to go out of prison and not really having anything to do but just go back to prison. He had recognized the flaws within Japan's, well, justice system and he would go on to try and resolve that. He would try and fix that. And that is basically how I end this video. He would pretty much just yeah, basically it would be like this. Azuku would go on to save people from their lives as criminals and he would turn their lives around. He would even help the troubled teenagers and youngsters out of Japan as well. Some of them would even go on to become heroes just like him. His life story was very inspiring to many people considering how he started off as a, as some sort of career criminal criminal at the age of what 15 13 or 15 but now he was the number one hero he had turned his life around and he was now trying to do the same for many people of japan as well and that's why so many people ended up looking up to azuku and that's how i officially end the video people it is your boy King Tai next signing out. You guys already know the deal. If you like the video, uh, click that like button. If you've been rocking with my content for a little while, maybe hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and maybe share the video to others who may be interested in this sort of content. But yeah, that is all I got to say. Time, Clan. It's your boy King Tai next signing out. Peace.